the law limits freedom of speech, if you bring a case to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will presume that it is unconstitutional. That is my position. Otherwise, there is no point in the language, no law shall be passed a breaching so and so. That yan ang kung minsan hindi napapansin ng ating mga abogado o mga nag-aaral ng batas. Akala nila, lahat ng laws are presumed to be constitutional. Hindi totoo yun. That is the general rule. The exception is, when the law seeks to limit free speech, then the law either has no presumption of constitutionality or unconstitutionality, or in the extreme, the law is presumed to be unconstitutional. I prefer to view that law as unconstitutional at the start, so that the burden of proof is on the lawmaker who, were, who ordered that law. The Cybercrime Act is a law that dangerously limits the growth of the marketplace of ideas. Therefore, it is presumed to be unconstitutional. But in addition, the law is unconstitutional because it uses language that is overbroad and language that is too vague. In other words, it violates what we call in constitutional law the overbreadth doctrine and the vagueness doctrine. What two doctrines? Overbreadth and vagueness. What two doctrines? Overbreath and vagueness. Now I will explain what is the meaning. The overbreath doctrine holds that if a law is so broadly written that it deters free expression, then the Supreme Court will strike it down on its face because of its chilling effect. If it's a bit, if you try to limit cyber activities, particularly cyber literature or cyber text or any kind of data or information, if you try and limit that by means of a law, but your law is not well written, and it covers so many activities, na parang takot ka na, galawin ang computer mo, baka mamaya eh, may kasalanan ka pala sa ilalim ng batas, masyado kasi siyang broad, then that law is unconstitutional. Because it produces a chilling effect on the public. Ayaw mo nila magsalita, dahil mamaya hindi nila intindi, dahil sa dami ng listahan dyan ng mga bawal, natakot na sila, meron ng chilling effect. That is overbreadth doctrine. Hindi pa yan masyadong kilala sa ating bansa. Pero sa libro ko, nakalagay yung mga doktrina na iyan. And in one case, the Supreme Court adopted these doctrines. The witness doctrine refers to a law that provides a punishment without specifying what conduct is punishable and therefore the law is void because it violates due process. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong batas. Ang sabi niya, itong mga gawain na ito, labag sa batas. Pero hindi naman niya din describe exactly kung anong ginagawa mo. Halimbawa, sabihin lang niya, computer abuse, computer misuse, credit card fraud. Anong ibig sabihin ng mga yun? That is too vague. So that law becomes unconstitutional because it violates the vagueness doctrine. To summarize, the Cybercrime Act is unconstitutional because it uses language that is too broad, and it uses language that is too vague. To put it in another way, this law is unconstitutional because it violates the overbreadth doctrine and the vagueness doctrine. Among the provisions of the Cybercrime Act that are too broad or too vague are Section 4, Paragraph C, of Paragraph 4. It makes libel a cybercrime if committed online. To magbatikos ka, libel yun. Kung magbatikos ka, halimbawa, sa Twitter or sa Facebook or other social media outlets, that's already libel. Section 5. It punishes any person who aids or abets the commission of any cyber crime, even if it is only through Facebook or Twitter. Ibig sabihin, may nabasa ka dyan sa internet at nagustuhan mo mas dahil batikos nga sa gobyerno o sa isang abusadong Official, tapos ni retweet mo lang o kaya in, in any, by any other method you send it to have a more expanded audience then you are aiding and committing and you will therefore be guilty under the cyber crime act eh kung may marinig ka sa palengke at inulit mo na batikos o kanino man at inulit mo hindi ka naman guilty ng libel ah bakit sa ating cybercrime app, iyan, 
Simply repeating things. Nag-comment ka, nag-like ka, nag-share ka. Guilty ka na. Because you're aiding and abetting. Pwede ni interpret yan in that way. That is why I'm saying, it is too way. Sabihin mo kung ano bang ibig mo talagang binabawal dyan. You may just to retweet it, just to comment on it, just to share it, just to put like on it. That is why I, I insist that the law should be struck down as unconstitutional. Section 6. It adopts the entire penal code. Ang sabi ng batas natin ngayon, kung ano man yung crimen sa ating penal code, crimen din yun. But the penalty shall be one degree higher. Eh bakit kung mag-libel ka, four years lang ang penalty mo, bakit kung sa, in, sa internet mo gagawin, penalty mo one, one degree higher, let's say maybe six years. Bakit ganun? Anong diferensya sa real life at sa virtual life? What is the difference? Libel is libel anywhere, so the penalty should be the same. In fact, there are some people who think that when you commit libel, if you are charged and found guilty, your penalty, penalty should only be a fine, should only be made to pay the other party, but you should not go to jail because you want to protect free speech. Eh, ako nga, simula pumasok ko sa politika, sarik-sarik ng sinungaling at chismis at intrigang inabot ko. Kaya lang, basta may sinabi sila, sinasabihan ko lang, at ikaw rin, double. <laughs> Section 7. It makes the same act punishable, both under the Penal Code and the Cyber Crime Act. Ang ibig niyang sabihin, isa lang ang ginawa mong mali, pero pwede kang i-prosecute both under the Penal Code and then under the Cyber Crime Act. So for the same act, you can be punished two times. That is a violation of the so-called double jeopardy prohibition in our Constitution. And finally, Section 19. It authorizes the Department of Justice to issue to restrict or block access to computer data which is found to be prima facie violated of the new law. Section 19 is the called take down clause. Eh kung nagbasa lang pala ang somebody there in the Department of Justice. At sa tingin niya, masama yon, lalo na kung gagamitin niyang clause, it endangers national security. Or even worse, if he says, it endangers public interest. Even kung sabihin, even without going to court, even without any evidence, Pwede nyo lang yasukat i-block ang access sa iyong computer data? What kind of, what kind of provision is that? It violates our sense of justice. Under the due process clause, no person shall be held accountable without notice or hearing. E pero mo, wala kang notisya, wala kang paglilitis, hindi ka man narinig, basta sukat niya i-block. That section 19 is the most dangerous provision of all. For these reasons, I humbly predict, I predict that the Supreme Court will strike down the Cybercrime Act as unconstitutional. Otherwise, it will be a black, black day for freedom of speech in this country.